Okay, welcome to What's Up Co-op Shop. Steve here with Kim. Hi, everybody. We're going to be misbehaving tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> Aim to misbehave. Okay. You know, it's been recording Firefly all night, right? Yes. That's the whole point of playing this game. Okay. Well, you were asking to play some type of game with some nostalgia in it. and I was, because after playing Zombie Side Turtles, mm -hmm. I was like, we got to do that more. We are going to play Turtles again, because... Because. Because but, I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Then, yes, I did say, how about Firefly? So, mm -hmm. this is my fault. <laughs> yes. So, this one we haven't covered at all on the channel. So, this will be the first time on either channel to show this game. So, yeah, hope you guys can, uh, I don't know, see what it is. So, there's a couple ways of playing this game. You can play this as a one-off, which we're going to do tonight. You can also play it as a campaign. And it's not a set campaign. It's, instead, what it is is... The one-offs are called jobs. Each mission is a job. And at the end of the job, you're getting X amount of money. So how a campaign works is you do, you can pick what jobs you go on. Just like if you were captain of, of the Serenity. You can just figure out what you want to do. And the goal is to try to, I can't remember how many, how many jobs you have to complete off the top of my head. But I'll look up in the rule book later. But basically you have to complete a number of jobs. And if you make it to the end, you win the game. And so you have to kind of manage how much money you have, how much you need to save for the next job, and which job you tackle in which order. But we're not going to do it tonight, we're just doing a one-off. So tonight, we're doing The Rescue. So I've got the game all set up, and this game has a very cool table presence. It might look a little weird from your perspective, because these are all 3D buildings. And it's kind of nice, because they all fit inside the box. In fact, the box itself is a building, too. Oh, yeah. So... Uh, and that's important to note that if you do look for a copy for this game, make sure the box isn't damaged. Like most of the time, it doesn't matter, but in this game, it absolutely matters because that is an actual game component piece. Cool. But yeah, I've got all the boards set up. These are all the buildings on the board. Um, we are going to be playing as Wash. You chose Wash. I did. So I had to pick Zoe. Zoe, of course, right? Because <laughs> yes, you know, dear. Yes, dear. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna have some fun. Um. What? Let's uh, describe, so the basic component is a lot of this does, is controlled by a time track. So you see going around the board, starting from up here, going around the entire board, we've got, and we've got stuff on top of it for this scenario. Um, we're going to be moving our, our markers here. So each, each character has these different time track markers. And how it works is whatever character is furthest behind on the time track will go next. And okay. they take two actions. That's simple. If it's an enemy... Two actions. It's if, it's if it's a crew member, it's two actions. And currently, we're the only ones on the time track because everyone else is kind of hanging out. It, well, there's nothing to worry about. The other big thing about the game is there are the characters. So I'm playing as Zoe, which isn't showing up great on the close-up. That's a little better. So if you notice up there, it says casual. So these are the actions you can pick from. So uh, my movement, I've got some other abilities, and I've got some abilities that specifically deal with wash. And you have the same thing for me. But the other thing that's important is you have a heroic side. Uh, not showing up great, but it's okay. Here's the heroic side. And so during the game, at any point, you can choose to be heroic. You may also be forced to be heroic. And the difference is if you're in casual mode, basically... That shows up horrible. Let me take that away. It's driving you crazy. It is driving me crazy. Um, if Yeah, I'll show up here a little bit. There we go. So if you do heroic side, basically the enemies are coming after you. If you're on casual side, it's kind of like stealth. They're like ignoring you, just a normal person walking around. And so it's going to be managing what state you're in in this game. Yes, Stan, he is. Hey, Stan. <laughs> uh, yep, agreed. You like watching... Um... So I watch The Rookie because mm -hmm. he's in it. It's just, it's a cop show. It's very, yeah, yeah. it's a generic, <laughs> like every other cop show. Um, but he's funny in that movie, like an old, old rookie cop. Anyway. That's a good one. But, um... Okay. Yeah. So that's basically how it works. We'll get into deep what? No, even better. What people should watch if they love Nathan Fillion is the Uncharted uh, short film that he did as Nathan Drake from the Uncharted game series. It's on YouTube. It's amazing. He likes Rookie too. <laughs> yes. 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 Rookie. It is good. I had fun. Oh, he would be the perfect but, Nathan Drake. Yeah. So he did. He was Nathan Drake in this short oh, film. Be so good. For and that. they the way they filmed it was so good because it was like over the shoulder third person yeah, shooter. Yeah. It was great. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Find it on YouTube. He's, yeah, per I, I love it. He's perfect casting. Perfect Nathan Drake. Perfect casting. But no, instead, Tom Holland is going to be Nathan Drake in the upcoming Uncharted movie. Okay. Which, eh, he seems too young, but I think the film is starting the story earlier mm. in the Uncharted storyline. But yeah, anyway. it should have been 
Should have been Nathan Fillion. Let's <laughs> be talking about Nathan. So. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jackie Go would be amazing. Yeah, sure, true. true. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into the game. Um, basically, that's how it's work. It's gonna be your classic move around, do things. Uh, the the mission's gonna tell us a lot about about the game, how it plays. So let's just jump into it. So I already have the board set up. Um, there are cowboys around the board. So you see, here's one here. There's one there. There's a uh, five of them around the board. And they're just gonna be standing around, no big deal. And then there's also these. It's gonna be hard to see from this from the video. I'll take this one off. You see that there's actually doors yeah, on the sides it towards the camera. Well, I, I can just step inside of it though. Oh. So there's a door there, for example. And so I've got um, the cowboys are standing through one door, and the doors that did not stand by. There's a little lock symbol, and so we can go try to unlock the door and walk in, or we can deal with the cowboy potentially. Okay. All right. So what are we doing? We're trying to do the rescue. And okay, yeah, we're trying to do the rest. Of you. I'll, just run, I'll just read through it right now. After the war, those who used to wear brown found it hard to get proper work. Ah, brown coats. I know. <laughs> Some folks who had fought on the losing side turned to work that's somewhat less than legit. One of your war buddies has been taken hostage, owing to some previously perceived slight against the local boss's delicate perception of themselves. Goes without saying, the rest of us aren't inclined to let him twist. So we're gonna go rescue our buddy who's a hostage. It's so, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, there you go. It could be Nathan. Um, so the goal, we have 50 moments. We're actually playing 60 because we're only playing two characters. I had an extra time track for us to so give us a little more time. Um, we must locate the hostage, deal with the local thugs, and get the hostage out alive. Uh, the job is successful if the hostage and all the crew are on the landing pad before time runs out, aka this big thing. So we just have to get the hostage and us on the landing pad. Presumably the surrounding there. Yes. We don't have a giant surrounding miniature, sorry. We don't. Oh, I should print one. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. I gotta do that, and I gotta do the Groot. <laughs> Got so many. So once you find the hostage, he's in one of these buildings, we don't know which one, and each building has an objective marker to say that these could be potential uh possibilities okay. as we play the game we'll remove those it's a there's some extra tokens on here i'll show you what they look like they're face down come off the side you don't really even see them but basically we'll be flipping those face up to see if it's there or not but basically once you found the hostage thugs will appear there and then we'll have to fight the thugs and get out okay that's the goal so the special rules information about the hostage whereabouts are thin but some of the local cow pokes may have seen something of the captors may have left a digital trail. To find more information, you may attempt a negotiation challenge while next to a cowboy with a token. If successful, take an intel token. Success or failure, remove the negotiation token. So if you see on the board, there's a little green token next to each of these cowboys. We can walk up to them and talk to them. That's what okay. it is. If it's successful, we'll get an intel token, which looks like this. Um, also, uh, the other thing we can do is we can attempt a tech challenge. So there's a terminal right in the middle of the building here. If we're successful, we can get an Intel token that way. And why do you want these? At any time, you can discard an Intel token to reveal a face down number token off the board. The hostage is not in that building. Remove the objective token from that building and discard the token. Okay, right, let's do that. So you can talk to them to try to illuminate them. The other way you can do it is we can stick our head in and look. So if we do that, um, yeah, reveal a face down token just like normal. If the number token matches the building, we found the hostage. Okay. If it's one away from the number we are in, because these buildings are numbered, um, place a cargo crate and one thug in that building. Um, and then you have to be hero heroic. If it's more than one away, the building's empty. Okay, well, remind me when that happens. Yep. Other than that, um, every time we cross a star, something's going to happen, but we'll work with that right now. We'll just um, start the game. Okay, so... so... To start, we can choose to be on any space on the road. That on works. the road. Um, are you a good, you're a good talker, mm. right? Actually, I totally forgot. We have $3,000. Before we go on this trip, we have to buy equipment. Oh. So let's do that real quick. I, I did save this for us, all of us to look. Okay, so let me zoom in up here-ish. We can do that. Okay, so we have five items to buy. We have a very fine hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's important about this is this symbol up here. It's going to add to that skill. So this one is a a speaking test or a negotiation test okay so it's gonna help in oh, negotiation so and that this is our skill level on our side here um let me zoom out to people see it yeah. so here 
Yeah, so you have one of each symbol on there, which is awesome. Yes. I am not good at much of anything other than fighting, which is fitting, right? Yeah, she's a badass. Mm-hmm. So we have a very fine hat. When buying equipment, you may also sell Intel tokens for $400 each. Okay. Not useful now, but something you can get. Um, and it's cost down here for 200 bucks. You buy a monkey wrench. So it's going to be one tech symbol. You may re-roll failed sa sabotage and negotiation. I'm sorry. May re-roll failed sabotage and negotiation tests. So some of the negotiation tests will have a sabotage keyword. You can re-roll re those. Also, if you're in heroic mode, hence that little time on there, we can move ahead three spaces on the time track to do a brawl with two dice. Okay. So this, you can actually beat people with a monkey wrench as well. That's two. Here's another one. We have a revolver. Um, good for shooting, of course, for two time. Uh, looks like we have a Loha shirt. I feel like this should be washes. That's washes. That's washed, totally. <laughs> Exhaust to look at the top card of any challenge deck. You may discard that card. So you can customize what type of things you want to run into. Uh, one more we get to pick from. And, oh my gosh, plastic dinosaurs. <laughs> of course, you inevitable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you can reroll any one die of another crew's tech chest test. Maybe done any time as long as the crew with the dinosaurs is available. Ah. So if Wash got that, it wouldn't be rerolling my test. Yes. It would be yours. Yes. Actually, the funny thing is, in this one, it would make more sense for me to have yeah. plastic dinosaurs because you actually have a tech symbol. I do have a tech symbol. But yeah, we have we have three thousand dollars to spend right now, so we can buy any of these and we'll replace it with another item. Or can spend two hundred bucks to discard all of them and get new five new ones. Get the dinosaurs. Get because the dinosaur. what I want Wash to do is I'm gonna strut down the street and go into this tech building. Okay. So you want the dinosaurs for Zoe. Yeah. Okay. And you want the monkey wrench to get some fight and tech as well? If that's what you want to do? Sure. Okay, so let's see. So if we buy this, so you go ahead and take away six hundred dollars from the money down there. Put this down here. I can move this up so I get a little more room. You guys can see what's going on a little better. So six hundred dollars for the plastic dinosaurs, and you can put it um, over there in this bank. And you want okay. Let's start the next card. So in place of that, we get tight pants. <laughs> we roll a persuasion negotiation test. I, we'll... Maybe you should get those, Zoe. <laughs> well, don't you want to get the uh, monkey wrench for another five hundred? Because you said you want to get more tech, right? I do want tech. Okay, yes. so let's get that. So another five hundred. That'd be for you. So we spent a thousand one hundred. We have ooh, lucky rabbit's foot. We get in place of it. Exhaust reroll up to two dice from a single test. Maybe used for another crew test. That is pretty amazing. Okay, you want to hang on to that? Um, maybe. I also think the revolver might be good to get a gun, but we can maybe get a better gun potentially. What do you want? You need to get something. Oh, you got the dinosaurs. You should need I got the dinosaurs. Else. You have a monkey wrench. Let's get the pistol then, because you can't attack range yet. No. We should get one pistol. You have range attack already? No. Um, no. No one has range attack right now. Okay. So let's get one of the pistols for 200. Okay. So I'll give that to you temporarily. Um, let's see what else we get. So how much more do we have? We have 1,700. Okay. We got flash kill pod grenade. Exhaust to shoot... Uh, with dice, one hit, all characters within three squares take two wounds. Wow, that's pretty cool. So big old grenades. Um, pretty darn good. That would actually potentially hit the hostage, though, if we're not careful. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. So what do you want to buy next? You want to buy some tight pants? What do the pants do for you? Uh, they reroll persuasion tests and give you a uh, talking thing. I'm only good at shooting at this point. You're you're a shooter. Why didn't you take the gun? I could take the gun for now. Yeah. We can pass between us. We just bought it. It's fine. Yeah. So what do you want to buy? You want to buy? Or you want the Aloha shirt? What's that one do? Exhaust to look at the top card of any challenge deck. And what are the what are my tight sexy pants do? Uh, reroll our persuasion tests. If you guys watching have any anything you want us to buy, let us know. Yeah, maybe Wash will buy the tight pants. Tight pants for two hundred. Okay. Okay, and uh, then we get a medical kit. Exhaust to heal two. That's pretty good. I think we should get that. Okay, that's two hundred. Okay, and then let's see. We have a do reprogrammer. We want, do we want to spend spend all the money now? 
Uh, we don't have to. We can use it for bribing as well, too. But I feel like this is really good to get to add those tech symbols. What else would I use tech for other than the center hub? Um, I, I don't know. Mostly the center hub. I, do we have 800? I feel like that's totally worth buying, and then this, that could be all we buy, potentially. Okay. So my fighting, I have one punchy fat power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's not very good at fighting right now. I, I'll i be better at that for us. Okay. You can protect me, Zoe. Yeah. You want me to get that reprogrammer? I think so. Okay. You'll be a brawler. I'll be a ranger. I'm not a brawler. I have... You have a brawl. You have a monkey wrench. I do have a monkey wrench. You're okay. right. Let's look at the next one real quick. Um, so, mine went to all tech tests. That's pretty good. I'm tech. But I'm good. I'm on. I think we're good. I think we've got enough stuff. How much money do we have we left? Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars left. Um, we can maybe get the lucky rabbits for his last item, but otherwise we're pretty good. Oh, we could get the grenades. If we really want to go crazy. No. Actually, that that'd take all our that money. That would be all our money. No, let's just take the money, I think. Okay. All right, so we bought a bunch of equipment. So for Zoe, I'll be carrying the medical kit. Um, and the medical kit, revolver, and the plastic dinosaurs. And you will be carrying the... Uh... Monkey wrench, reprogrammer, and some tight pants. <laughs> okay. So, excellent. All right. So we got our stuff. Let's go and put our characters on the board. So we can be in any. If I can be in any street spot, why don't I just go right here in front of the door? Yeah, you can totally just walk in there. Um, I guess I'll just try to do some negotiations. Yeah. You're way better at tech and negotiation than I am. I am. And ev you're better at everything right now than I am. You're just the muscle. <laughs> I think I am. Okay, so as being the muscle, maybe start down there in the corner. And try to see if we can break that lock. Sure. Let's try that. Start down here. Way down here. Out, out, of, out of sight of everyone. Okay. Cool. So, everything's set up. Let's start the game. So, if we come over here on the board, the time track, we Zoe's on top. So, uh, Wash is underneath that. Actually, maybe I'll turn this around so you can read it better. There we go. So, what that means is... Um, actually, no. Technically, you're off the board. So, But I'll go first. Okay. So I will choose two actions, and the actions I will do will have a, a time marker next to it. So you see up here, this is three movement and two time. So I will move my, my marker down two on that, and I'll move three spaces. And movement can't be a diagonal, or orthogonal, doesn't matter. The only stipulation for movement is you can't move diagonally through a door, and you can't move diagonally across a corner of a building. Okay. It's honest. If you played Hero Clicks, it's the same rules as that, basically. It's been a long time, Steve. I know. So that's what you can do. The other one is like a plus two time. It's a is an assist, uh, or boost action. So from cover, I can count heroic shooting as casual. So, which is awesome because then I, normally I can't use this until I'm heroic, but if I'm in cover, which is next to a building, I can shoot and they and they won't be able to see me. Okay. Which is nice. Um, and then um. What does that mean? Which is plus health to out of sight goons. Um, I will wound an out of sight, out of sight. Oh, heal is out of sight goons. I believe is that what it is? Yeah, heal. Why would you heal? A... You heal other people. But why a goon? No, no, no. As long as I'm out of sight of goons, I can heal someone else. Oh, I thought you were gonna heal the. Okay, I got you. No, no, no. And I can move you as well for two actions, and then assist, which means I can give you my my icons potentially. Okay, right, so I'm going first. The first thing I'll do is I am next to that uh, that lock. lock. So go ahead and flip that lock face up. Let's see what it is. Actually, give, give it to me. I'll do a close-up for that one. Okay, so this one is brute force, which is perfect for me, kind of. So this is not action, just peeking at it. It requires six success to do it, and I have to do a fight test. So what I'll do is I will roll... Um, see this one dice on there? I roll one die. I need to get six or more. But so, the thing, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you need a perfect roll. Kind of. However, if you look at my character board, 
I have two of uh, those symbols on my board. Mm -hmm. So I need a four or higher. Or actually, mm -hmm. yes, a four or higher to do it. Also, if you look closely, that is a heroic symbol. So I have to be in heroic mode to do it. Oh. And if I look at the board here, um, if I'm in heroic mode, that cowboy south of me will see me. So I could brute my way through there, but I don't that's think not, it's worth that's it. That's not worth it. I don't think so. So that's not an action. I will do my first action to do to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend um, two time points to move three spaces. Do you want to go to the other lock or go to a guy? Um, I think I'm going to go try talking to a guy. So I'll move one, two on the time track. You're going to go one. one, two, three? Yep, right next to him. Do you have to be on this? Or no, just be next to him. Okay. And let's go ahead and do a negotiation chat test is my, my next action. You have no negotiation. I have one. Oh, dinosaurs. Yeah, so okay. it's risky, but we'll try it. Okay. So how that works, I draw one of these negotiation cards and flip it up. So this is going to look horrible. That's okay. Secret handshake. So I need to know the secret handshake to have him tell me where the uh, hostage is. So I can do fingers full of credits, basically bribe them essentially. So if this cost me three time to do this, it would have to be a negotiation test. With one die, I need 10 to do it. However, bribery, you can spend money to, to increase those chances. Okay. Other than that, I can do fistful of fists, or f f I can just start punching. So I would need to roll an eight with, with punching, and I have to be in heroic mode for that. Um, so I... We have extra money. We have five hundred dollars. We have five hundred. Yeah. So I, I Is think I want to do the bribery test real quick, and I'm going to double check to make sure how much that drops it when I do that type of test. Um, I always forget how much it does. Someplace in here. Where is it? Bribery. Do 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 do. Let's go test. Here it is. Um, before you attempt a test, you may choose to pay bribes. For every hundred dollars you pay, you add plus one to your test total. Okay. We don't really need the money for much else. Do you? I have to roll one die. Oh. You're rolling one die, and you need ten. And and I have plus one to it right now. So I need. Yes. So how it works? The the dice. Let's look at the dice real quick. The dice are kind of normal d sixes, but they have two special symbols on it. They have heroic action symbol which is the serenity, of course, that counts as a six and it explodes. So I roll another die on top of that. Okay. The bad one is the disgruntled icon. It means I automatically failed. Now, well, I shouldn't say that. If you roll more disgruntled icons than you do um, heroic icons, the serenity icon, you automatically fail. But if, you, if I would, for example, roll one um, serenity and one disgruntled, it still counts. This doesn't add anything to my total, but this would. At least or it won't fail. if you just roll pips? That's pips, it's just whatever it is. Would yeah. that fail right there? Right now, it with would. A, with a face. Oh, with a face? Like so, this? Yes. Yeah. No matter what I roll, okay. it would be failed. Okay. Even if I had 10 on there, it would I'd fail. Okay. So, yeah, I think we can spend all the money. But that's a hard bribery. Or unless you want me to go heroic and go crazy right now. I feel like that's not a good idea. You got a guy right there. Yeah. And a guy right next to you. Yeah. Okay, we'll just try it. We'll try it. We'll try the uh, the bribing. You want so to spend all, all, if the, all the money? If we pay 500 bucks, then that means you have to roll a five. No, it means I, because I have one symbol, I have to, I get six actually to it. So I need a four, four or, or higher. Four. Yep. For all 500? Yep. All right, 50 50 shot. <laughs> four or five. No, it's not. It's better than that, right? Four or higher is a 50-50 shot. No. It's a six-sided die. Oh, yes, just kidding. I was thinking... <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. That is amazing. I Zoe. rolled a two. Zoe! Just not a good talker. Okay, so I failed. Place a new goon as close as possible out of sight. So he's suspicious of my behavior, but nothing else happens. Out of sight. Back here? Uh, we don't actually have any other goons. Because goons, oh. I think, are specifically those guys. Can you flip that card over real quick? Right this? there? Yeah, it's a goon. That's cowboy. cowboy. Nope, a goon is anybody. So yeah, you have to add a, a thug someplace. So here. Sure. Out of sight. Yep, that works. Okay, right, that's it for my two action. Oh, that one actually did cost three times. I can move three. One, two, three. Okay. That's a terrible turn, Steve. That was absolutely horrible. All right, I'm going to go into this building, and that's just two because I can move three spaces. Mm -hmm. 
Alright. Is that two time for you? Yep, two time. Okay. Well, building. actually, you did peek into that building. Because that one is one of the options. Why? Could there bad guys be? Could it there could be, be there. Guys? It could okay, be there. so could I peek first? Uh, remove the objective token right now. And reveal one of the number tokens. Oh gosh. It's two spaces down. Okay. One space over. Yep, you got it. Okay. Good enough. Okay, right, and grab one of these objective tokens to see. Or was it here? No, it's one space over. One. Right here? Right there. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay, reveal one of those tokens and see what happens. Seven. Oh, you got it! Holy cow! Wait, what? The hostage is in here? If the number of the token matches the buildings you found the hostage, place a body token under the objective token and place three thugs next to the hostage. Fastest game. That was a right, one so in ten I, chance. I drew a seven, and I'm in building number seven. Yes. Here. Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. This might be a really fast game, guys. Hey, works for me. Where's the The hostage? hostage. So we actually got the miniature for him. He's, he's actually unfortunately tied up. He's right here. So he's going to be in there, um, and then you need to also put three thugs next to him, and all, we can take away all the objectives because they're not these ops not in, in these other buildings. Can't believe that! <laughs> clutch. That was a that was clutch. Crit. I'm gonna call. Crit, crit queen. <laughs> now the hostage. You know, what's Look terrible? at me, I'm like over here like talking yeah, people and like I'm not the fighter and I just <laughs> jarred, walked right into this building. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> You're so screwed too, I, by the way. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm just, just tying me up right next to him. Just do it. <laughs> okay, so now, now the good thing is, um all be, there was actually health tokens in all these time tracks. Okay? So I'm gonna put them right here so people can see them. But basically this is gonna be the health of the hostage. If the hostage ever loses that many wounds, um, we fail the fail the mission. So where's the, can you grab the other ones, dude? <laughs> I'm calling out the window, wife. <laughs> get your get your butt over here. <laughs> Why did you do this time? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, let me make sure the building. I can totally just see Wash just stumbling in. <laughs> I know, <it's> so fitting. <laughs> uh, place three thugs next to you. Did that cool? Yeah. Okay, all in the crew. All crew in this building must act heroic. Okay, I'm heroic. So, yep, yeah, you got flipped. flipped and do, I flip, do I change mm -hmm. my... Yep, change your... And they have new miniatures for all that stuff. Now I'm holding a gun very poorly. That's terrible posture for firing a gun. No. Yeah. Okay, so now, once found, thugs will target the hostages if they were a heroic crew. So they're going to shoot at them if they can. The number of wound tokens remaining on the timeline is the number of wounds the hostage has left. So how, how the game works is, if you get hit by attack, by default, it's always just one wound. Okay. So um, your health, if you let's, let's zoom over to your board, is actually four. So you take four wounds before you're downed. When you're downed, you're never out of the game. Instead, you get reduced abilities. Okay. And you can't use your equipment. Um. Yeah, weak from their ordeal, the hostage may be moved as a heavy object. The hostage may not fight and takes a wound when a crew next to them takes a wound. The hostage may be healed up to a maximum of four wounds. The hostage loses all the wounds, the job is a bust. Okay, so what that means is uh, moving a heavy object. So if I'm on the board, and let's say, for example, um, I'll move this guy off the board real quick. Let's say this guy is a heavy object and he's next to me. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. So I let's say I did three movement. I can go one, and then my one of my movement points, I can pick up the heavy object and put it anywhere next to me. Two, three, for example, right? Okay. So you kind of like leapfrogging with a heavy object generally is how it works. Okay. So, okay. Now, because, let me zoom back out here, because you have to have heroic, all of those thugs you grabbed will be added to the board right now. I was thinking that would use them as generic thugs and use the cowboys as, spe as specific abilities. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So in this game, if you don't mind grabbing a thug card over there real quick, uh, top one. There you go. What I mean by that is, here's the back of the thug card. It tells you exactly what they do. If possible, brawl, otherwise move. So these are purely melee characters. On the flip side of them, if you wish to do it, they have specific abilities. So now they will do the same actions on the back of the card, but they'll have these effects. Hey, hey Baron. 
Yes, it is Firefly. It is Firefly, and that show is amazing. I totally agree with you. And Wash just totally walked right into some shit. <laughs> I know. So we're going to play for these guys, to the generic side for now. We'll play with the Cowboys with their specific side. So you see a little bit of both in the playthrough. Okay. okay, so they're going to just move and punch as much as possible. Now. I only did one thing. Correct, but we do need to add the thugs, three thugs to the board. Wait, was that a peak? The peak is your movement. It's just, it's not an action, just okay. part of movement. Um, what guys did you grab? They're just the three that were over there. Okay. Do, I, do you want me to get different ones? No, I just kind of, I actually need to know which ones they are. All right, so this one has, oh, a giant axe. Okay. This one has a machete and like a stabby stab blade claw. And this guy is wielding a really nice saber. The butcher's got the axe. Uh, the martial artist, I think, is a saber. And they, uh, we'll do the punk as the other one. Okay. okay. And I don't know if it's for sure that's exactly right or not. but Okay, so let's finish your turn. And these guys are going to go immediately after you go. Okay. Zoe, get over here. Yeah. So I'm... Am I next to the hostage? By default um, in the room, or, or I just threw things in there. Are there specific spaces? Yeah, no. the The objective needs to be replaced by the hostage. Okay, it's a so, small room, so it doesn't matter. So technically, the objective was by in this corner, if I recall. Uh, Place three thugs next to the hostage. Oh no, he's just gonna go back where he was. He's surrounded. So I mean, you and can, the terminal. As long as you're not next to the thugs, you can run away. You might have to do a breakaway test otherwise. I am next to, unless, like, I stopped in the, the corner here. But yeah. I, I just put myself here. As you mentioned, people can see better. So it's like, I, by default, by throwing stuff in there, I'm just next to one, and the hostage is on the other side. Okay. I mean, that's fine. That's what you want to do. No, if there's an easier way to get out of the situation. No, I mean, I mean, I had the objective right here, so the hostage should technically be here. Oh, okay. Um, Actually, it's a small room, so... Yeah, you have to do one breakaway. That's fine. comes down to it. Okay. Okay. So okay, I I only did one action. How many? I have two. Yeah, you have another action too. Okay. Right so if yep. I do a breakaway, I can run away again, right? Um. So how it works is breakaway is a brawl test. And then I could run. If you do so, how it works is a brawl test is you will try to. You'll, you'll roll your brawl against the uh, enemy's brawl. Yeah. And if you're greater than you are successful, you can either choose to wound them or move away with any movement speed you have. And if I move... Yeah, Andre, I know. I could... The second season would, be, would have been awesome. Would have been. So would have, could have if I it. successfully brawl and break away, I could move here, bunny hop him... And when you're not engaged with me right now, I'm, actually, I'm, you yeah. you could ch you could have chose me next to the hostage. You could have been there because right. the door's right here. So you technically are right there. Oh, yeah. So, so you're you next said to the hostage. I walked into the door right here. Yeah. So if you want, you can brawl right now, and then you can you can use your movement to get out. Wouldn't he block my exit if I bunny hopped him? No, because you're next to the door, so you can pick him up and move him right through that door. Yeah, but then is he blocking my exit? Otherwise, I don't know how you get the guy out. Can I untie him? You can't tie him. Okay. No. no, he's uh, he's soft. Um, that's a good question. Or I just I just just say put him where he was initially because you could have been peek you could peek right here, and then he I initially put him right next to the door. Oh, so he was by the door. Yeah. So these guys are all surrounded him. So let's play that way because that's the way I originally had it and. I that makes it, it up. easier, yeah. Okay. okay, let's just do that. Okay, because you can then pull him away. Now the problem is this guy sees you. I, I'm gonna get shot or stabbed. And this guy sees you, and this guy sees you. So those three are on the board. So can you find those guys on the side of the board, please? I don't know who they are. So one's got a. This is a sharpshooter, I believe. Yep, sharpshooter. And the grizzled gunman. So you can put him over there. The so sharpshooter. Grizzled gunman. 
Will these guys shoot the hostage instead of me? They'll shoot you. No, they'll shoot the hostage or you. They'll pick. Whoever's closest. All right, well, I'm going to try a... Is this those two that see you? What about this guy? Yeah, he would see me. Who's this guy? I don't know. The duelist. Okay, so those guys have to go on the board. Yeah, you're in Troublesville. I am. Well, I got to pull the hostage out. So I don't have to do a breakaway because Correct. Of how you can just I run. should have done that. You can just run. Okay, so I'm going to do... I got to go this way. One. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we just have to sprint there because we didn't take out any of the bad guys. And yeah, I mean, he's lucky you found him, but also super unlucky. So if I go here and I go, can I move diagonal across him? Yeah. One. I can't go too Two. far away from him because he'll be stuck. Yeah, you have to move him with you. I did. I moved him from the door. That was a bunny hop. Whoops. Can I bunny hop him again? Yeah, as long as you have movement. You're using one, two, two movement, right? Because it, it was one to bunny hop. Because you look at your board. Your board has, have, for two oh, times, you have four, right? Yeah. So that was one bunny hop, two, three, four. Yep, that'll work. Okay. And that was two time. So I come over here to the board. I'll move you down two more times. Okay. Now for the pain. I'm so dead. Yeah, this is not good. I had the duelist going first, so let's go ahead and see. Can you flip over um, what what they do again on the other side? So if more, more than six, which he is you not. You can show that to people? Yeah, thank you. So this is how the cowboys work. If more than six from the target, they'll spend two time to move three. After moving or within six, they'll shoot instead. All right, he's going to shoot me. Is he he's, six? No, he's two. He's two away, Steve. Oh, yeah. He's right here. Yeah, he's going to shoot you twice. And his ability is he only spends two to shoot. So he's spending four time to shoot right now. Because he's going to shoot twice. Okay. Yeah. So it would be... So these guys would technically appear behind you. No, it's three time to shoot. Oh, uh, we're going to flip him over. He's got special ability. I'm confused then. Oh, you said you were using the special cowboy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So two time to shoot. One, two, one, two. So he's going to end up here. Oops, I didn't show you guys what happened. Let me show you over here. Sorry, so he would start back here, and he's going to go one, two, one, two to shoot twice on you, Wash. Okay. So he's going to roll uh, one, one die. dice. And what does he have to roll? He has to roll a number of symbols equal to the range away. So currently you are... Three. Two, two away. away. Yep, so he needs to roll two higher. Two, oh, wow. Yeah, so you're most likely taking some points there. Yep. Yep, one hit. One hit. Yep, two hits. Two hits. Ouch. Okay, so two wounds. Come those over here. Yep, but you actually have four health, so you're still doing okay. That was the first guy. That was the first guy. There are all these thugs right outside in this room. I know. This this was like, oh yeah, it's good, you got it. Nope, kind of. No, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, and then... So that was Duelist. Let's go on to the next person that's going to activate. It's going to be the Grizzled Gunman I have. So what is he going to do? He's back here. So he gets to re-roll missed six. shooting tests. Are you win the six? He is... One, two, three, four, five. Five. He's five. So he's going to shoot. Yep. So he's going to shoot and he's going to be... Three move. Three to or do three it. time. So one, two, three. One, two, three. He's going to be done. Why is he shooting? Oh, two actions. Yeah. He used everyone does two actions at the camp. And he gets to re-roll missed shots. That's correct. So, but he's five away, so he needs a five or better, right? That's correct. Okay. We have a chance. Critical miss? Yes. But he can re-roll that. He does re-roll misses, correct. Critical miss. All right, second okay. turn. That's one. So one hit. That's it. I am almost dead. <laughs> I know. It's not good. I do have the med pack, so I just yeah, got to do we were here. I know, I know. Okay, so sharpshooter. Oh, you're so screwed. <laughs> so show me what he does. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm so dead. So he's a sharpshooter. One within 12, a visible crew, he shoots with two dice for One, three times. One, two, three, four, five, six, you seven, definitely eight, 12. nine, nine. Yeah, so he's going to stand there and just snipe you. Okay. 
With two dice. With two dice. What does he have him to hit? Nine, because you count to nine, right? Yes. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, nine. Okay. Hit. Um. Yes, but he did explode, so you roll one more die. You have to roll less than a three. That works. Totally miss. Totally miss. Oh, good. The way he does it again. Text it again. Okay. There's a different color die too. Um, for different. Miss. You missed. I'm alive. Okay. <laughs> I so... can see. Watch. Holy shit. <laughs> there you go. All right. So that means <laughs> that was six for him. One, yes. two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we have the the thugs to go. They're in the building. They're in the building. So what are they? What are they doing? Thugs. If possible, they brawl. Otherwise, they move. Three. So this guy is in the corner. He's going to move. So you good. put him in the corner. So he's got to go yep. one, two, three. He's yep. There. So that's three time. Yep. So three time for which guy did you move? The guy with the, the axe. axe. So that would be the butcher. Okay. Oh, was uh, I not one, supposed two, to move One, two, three. Him? You're fine. Okay. Oh, and then two more to brawl. To brawl. So he's okay. going to roll one dice. Okay. Uh, so how brawling works is you roll your brawl with his. Okay. And whoever's higher. That's wins. why the color matters. Yes. So and your your brawl is. Oh, I'm in heroic. Do I get extra die because I have my monkey wrench? You could do that. Yes. I believe so. Yes. Let me double check that real quick. Why would I have the monkey wrench and not be able to defend well, myself? Yeah, because um, one. No, you can. It should help you. Yeah. You have plus one because you have one symbol. So one I roll. Symbol. I roll three dice. No. No. You don't want to three dice because the next dice. Um, the number of dice on the... So here it is. Uh, do, 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 do. Crew and goons with a brawl action on the character card or equipment may brawl with the character standing next to them. Yeah. Yeah, so you choose one of them. I don't think you use the time. Because he initiated the brawl it's with you. It's his action. It's his action. Okay, I can see that. I'm pretty I sure that's I am correct. going to be light... So you can totally use your. I'm using my monkey, monkey wrench, wrench, so I get two dice. Yep. I am the lighter die. And you get plus one to your roll because you have one more sim uh, symbol. So I can let me move over this, so people see what's going on. Okay. So, so monkey wrench. Yep. Two dice. Get two dice on there, right? Yes, but this symbol here gives me plus one pip. That's right. Okay. That's right. So I have an edge over this guy. Don't mess up. Good. Crit. So you can roll again, but it I doesn't don't matter. To. Don't need to. So now you have a choice. You can break away, mm -hmm. which you can move for free, or you can wound him. He's got one health, right? Mm. Thug? Flip. It's a bodyguard. Bruiser. Punk. Which one was this? The Butcher. The Butcher. Hold I on. think they all have two health died by default. Hold on. Struggled. Are you going to do the special abilities of them? You change your mind? No, I'm asking how much health they have. Um, they all have... No, they don't. The bodyguard has... I think they, by default, have two. I'm pretty positive on that. Punk has one. Yeah, they do vary. But I think if you play them generically, they have two health. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, they have two. Okay. Okay. So you do one wound to that guy? Or I can run away. Or you can run away. The nice thing, so if you come look at the time, we um, right now, after all this, you're going to go again, because you're behind me. After the other two thugs, As is, go. Exactly. And then I'm going to go after you. I just have to get into here, right? Just have to get in there, that's correct. With the hostage. This might be a really short game. Because I'm thinking you just run, hightail it through, this, through the alley. Correct. And if you look at your card, I think you have a way of moving me. I can move you, yes. Yeah. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Okay. I'm not going to damage him. Okay. So I break away for free because I successfully... You can, Yep, you can move with any movement you have on your card. So I get four movements. Four movements, yeah. So I'm going to go one, two, bunny hop, three, four. That would count. I'm so scared. God, you have to do a life one, but you have the hostage where we need them. I know. Now it's all you, Zoe. Okay, almost. But you do have the other thugs to go. But the nice thing is now you're further away. Yeah, so they can't punch me immediately. But yeah. I can still get shot to heck. No, because all the cowboys went. 
Oh. And no one can see you. Oh, so you just have to get there. I just have to get there. So now the other thugs are going to go. So they're going to move three and try to punch if they can. So One, two, three. And then he, if you can't, he's going to do another action and move three again if he can't punch you. Oh. One, two, three. And that was how much time? Sorry. Six. Um, six times. Six yeah. times. So let me move that guy six down. One, two, three, The other four, guy's going to just do six, six also. Six one, well. two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so you moved both of them while I was doing that, and they're both up there. Cool. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Do you survive that ordeal somehow? Okay. Okay. So now, coming back to the time one, I'm behind. Oh, you're behind. So I'm going to go. You're going to go again. I can spend two time to move you t two spaces. Yes. I'm tempted to do that twice, because if I did that oh. twice, would you get there in time? Possibly. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. If you spend all your actions, yes. That's then the only we can, way we can, we can do it. Okay, so we'll I'm going to move you twice for four okay. total. One, two, one, two. Okay. That and was then that's four, four time. time for you. So one, two, three, four. So the duelist will go before you get to go again. If, shoot, if it happens it would shoot me and i would die yes you would die so now it's my turn so looking at my board what i'm tempted to do run why don't complicate it just go your oh i'm slower in heroic your mode. husband is bleeding uh, i'm slower <laughs> yeah i'll stay casual i'm just gonna casually just walk casually out just try <laughs> you're fine yeah so my my oh, let me move my camera over so my oh. movement is uh two time for three three speed so let's go one two one, one two. two three one two three okay let's double check if this is it because this might be it guys this is the craziest this game i've ever played craziest game which let's see yeah the job is a success if the hostage and all the crew are on the landing pad before time runs out yes that's technically a win <laughs> oh my god how did that happen in like record time that's re that's crazy Again. Okay. Crit move right here. Drawing <laughs> the right token for the room. You have in. one life left, too. Hey, okay. I'm still alive. Just so people understand the game more, let's talk about how the game normally works, not crazy yeah, this Kim is mode. Not normal. <laughs> so, okay, first of all, let's, let's do the rewards. So, um, you will get all the money on the board because okay. we never cross any of these stars. So, anytime you cross a star, you don't get, you get less money. And that, so that's like campaign wise, you would pocket right. that money. Okay. Correct. So we would get all this money. Actually, no, do count the money because it's how good we did. Oh, well, so, we did fabulous. This so is five thousand dollars. Okay. Credits, excuse me. So grateful for the rescue. Your war buddy is happy to share some of the spoils of the endeavor, which landed them in hot water. If the crew successfully complete the job, roll a die for each wound the hostage has remaining. Six. So roll six dice. Okay. It says, um, multiply the total result by 100, get paid that amount. Okay. So 10, 15, 17, 23. So 2300 dollars you okay. get and on top of that. In addition, take the credits tucked underneath the timeline, which you did that already. Um, but if no cowboys were downed, which is true, we didn't take any cowboys, take an extra thousand dollars. Because we didn't kill anybody. That's right. <laughs> At the end of the job, you may also sell Intel tokens for five hundred dollars. Okay. Which we didn't even get. <laughs> so how much money did we get? Okay, we have. Does it tell us how well we did? One. There's a little chart two, on here that tells you. Four. Oh my five, gosh, it's not working six, at all, guys. Six, seven, eight. I'll do this. Eight thousand three hundred dollars. Measure of success. Oh, so eight thousand. Crushed it. Big score. Crushed it. Big score. Forty-five and up. Yeah, forty. Yeah, forty-five and up is the max. Crushed so. it. Yeah, that was. I'm not surprised. Uncharacteristic I'm not surprised. play. <laughs> okay, let's just talk about how the game normally works because that was insane. So, if you would have got, let's say you would have had your last wound, what that would mean is you would get this downed mark, this down card. What it does is it actually covers up um, your card like this. Mm -hmm. So now I no longer have my normal abilities, I have only these abilities. And it says here down characters can't use equipment, so I can't use any equipment I have. So now I still act like normally, but I move really slow, and then at some point I can heal myself, right? Okay. Um, and then here is get back to your feet and remove this card. So I can heal a little bit, and at some point I, I will I stand will get rid of it, stand back up. Okay. Right? 
But so otherwise, you're just crawling. Crawling and healing. That's all you're doing, really. So you're still playing the game. It's just that you're in a really bad state. So okay. you never actually get eliminated. Um, the You saw shooting. So like if I were to shoot, I would normally have to be in heroic action to do it. Uh, but like I said, I can, from cover, I can count heroic shooting as casual. So I can stand next to a building and shoot, shoot from where I am. Mm -hmm. Which I was planning on doing, but it doesn't matter for you. Uh, and like you said, for the, the skill test, it shows you how many dice you roll for that test. So if I did a shoot test, it has to be heroic. I roll one die, and then I count up how many uh, symbols I have that adds to my pips. So that's all that all that means. Um, assisting. We didn't we talked about that, but we didn't show it. I can spend two time out of turn if I'm next to you. Mm -hmm. And then you can take my symbols. Okay. So let's say you're in a brawl and you need help. I can run next to you and be like, I'm going to sit to you, spend two time. You get my six punches. <laughs> you got this. Go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> be holding for you. Punch him in the gut. <laughs> um, that's how that works. The other ones are these boost symbols. These boosts are, it's additional time when you're doing another action. So for example, from cover, I can count heroic shooting as casual. So if I were to do my shoot action here for plus for two time, I spend two more time. So four time total, I can shoot from cover and they won't see me. Okay. That's how that works. Um, and yeah, they're all different on the other side. They all do various different things. Um, we would keep all our equipment potentially for the next one. And then we do another buy round, buy equipment. Now, the other inter interesting thing is you need Intel to advance to the next mission or you have to buy it. And it's it's expensive if you don't get it in mission. If you well, do I mean, campaign. we got 8300 bucks. How expensive are we talking? We're, we're doing fine. Doing fine. <laughs> you can only have four items, too. Okay. So we're pretty maxed out. Um, but we also only play with two characters. They do recommend two players to play with two characters each. So four four players Correct. in total. Okay. Yeah. I did give us an extra uh, time, more time, because it's recommended in the rulebook to do that. So, um, Yeah, you saw the dice work. You saw a little bit how the skills work. They're all very different. Like Here's another one where it says persuasion. So I did a negoti negotiation heroic test to do that. Um, all of these cards, if Kim was going to hack that, which was original plan was. I know, my plan was to go in there and hack to get some into It's very similar to negotiation. You choose one or the other to do. So you defuse the alarm. Or you can disable the alarm for this ultrasonic alarm, and then success or failure, you do whatever it says. You must, when you draw these, you have to do one of two effects. You can't, there's no way you can actually mitigate and draw a different card. Okay. So that's the downside to that stuff, but. Well, the Hawaiian shirt would have let me Correct. manipulate it a little bit. That's the only, like one of the only ways you can do it in this game. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And normally, like, because I know when we played this before, we went, had to go through like five buildings just to find the hostage. This yeah. is not. This is typical. very atypical. <laughs> The other thing is, anytime you take out a bad guy, you do have these body tokens. You will put them down. <laughs> if a and these are heavy objects, so you can actually move them, and you can like tuck them in buildings because if anybody sees them, they will they will um, come after you basically. Yeah, they're alerted. Yeah, they're alerted to your presence, and then they they get added to the board and they start coming after you. It's like suspicion in Assassin's Creed. Exactly. <laughs> so that's really fun. So and, and like this one, this was a kind of a standard, uh, pretty basic way of playing it. Some of the other ones, they have patrol paths, so the enemies will walk around. So I played one game where I was, as Zoe, I was hiding around the corner. Wait for a guy to come by, take him out, take the body, put, put it around the corner. Wait for the next guy to come by, take him out, put him in the corner. It's just standing away. <laughs> it's just standing away from the come by. Yeah. So it's pretty fun. You, you can do stuff like that, potentially. Um, there are also other things like the alarm state. So, so sometimes you put this on the time tracks, and whenever you cross that point, the alarm's automatically activated. Everyone's coming after you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that we didn't cover. I oh, there's there's more uh, crates you can find, cargo you can get, uh, more items you can get in game while you're playing. Um, I don't know. Alan Tudyk just totally crushed it. He did. <laughs> you just <laughs> rocked it. Well, it was convenient too that you went before I went too. Yeah. Because that you can able to move me closer. Actually, it probably wouldn't matter because either way, it would have worked out the same if I went before yeah. you did. But I really like the time track in this game. I think it's really, really unique, and it's it's fun to manipulate that a lot. And and some of them you can actually, I think there's one character that you can move backwards on time. I'm not really positive who does that. It might have been one of the expansion characters. But um. So yeah, quick. Let's go over the quick thoughts since since we already played this. It's, it's a to play fun theater. game. If anything, just the characters themselves, because I'm a Firefly fan, fan, excuse me. So, but 
like you said, I like the, the time track so that your turn order changes, which impacts your own decisions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, fun game. I feel like you have stuff to say. I do. Okay, go for it. Lots of things to say. I There's things I like a lot about this game and things I dislike a lot about this game. They're very polarized. Like, I so let's talk about one thing I absolutely love. I love the casual and heroic states in this game. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to be like, hey, I'm just walking around. No, I'm not doing anything bad. People can, I can go talk to the bad guys. The cowboys, they don't care. Go talk to a thug. They don't, they don't mind me walking by. But once I do certain actions, I automatically become heroic. And then they come after me. I love how that works in this game. It's so cool. It's very thematic. And once you're heroic, you can go back to casual as well. So it's got that... While not being a stealth game, it's got that stealth vibe in it. And I love, you know me, I love stealth in my mm -hmm. games. Very, very cool. I already mentioned the time track. I think it's awesome. Oh, the other thing is, every time you cross one of these stars, um, you roll a die and there's an event that happens. And you look at the scenario, I'll tell you what type of event. It's all scenario specific in this, this, this situation. Um, like in this one, I believe the hostage could take wounds. Extra wounds. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe he is bleeding internally yep. from a body shot that exactly. we don't know about. Exactly. So yeah, so that's that's cool. I really really like the time track how that works in this game. It's really fun. I wish more like I said, more games did that. Um I think the buildings are pretty cool. The they do as you can see here, it gets kind of it's hard to see sometimes. Like if you're sitting on a chair like we are, we can't actually see this guy behind the building. I know you guys can see on the camera, but we can't see it. Yeah. Um, and then I would just pick it up and be like, "Did I put this back in the same spot?" Exactly, exactly. I mean, the, yeah. there's a ch there's a chart on the setup there, and it's fairly easy to quickly. Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. Quickly glance at it, so it's not too bad. Um, the table presence isn't that bad. It's probably average, I would say, for how big this game is. The, fun. the dice rolling. I like exploding dice. It is fairly meant. Otherwise, though. You mean like basic? Yeah, it's just basic. Nothing special. It's just dice rolling. Dice rolling. Here, here's the thing I don't like about the game. It is these cards specifically. The tech and the negotiation stuff. Like, I don't mind that it's there. I like that it's there. I don't like how I don't have a choice in it. And it's just kind of, there's some flavor around it, but it doesn't really matter. It's just, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to figure out what I want to roll, and I roll the dice and move on. Um, kind of similar story to these things too, right? Now, some of them might be um, open. I don't know if we have any. There might be... The door appears to be unlocked, but it's actually open. Um, I don't see any of them. So that's kind of cool that some of them could be open. But like that... I don't know. That doesn't bug me because it's an unknown event and that you're going to have to respond to it. Yeah. I, I guess I would like something more than... I guess the fact that it boils down to a die roll. Or, or two. Well, it's because your style of play is I want to manipulate everything yes. and have yes. full control. And sorry, sometimes it doesn't work that way. I know, I know. <laughs> so um, the rules for this game are rough. And I know there's a revised rule book on Guilford Stein's website. I do recommend going out to look at that. Uh, just because it's the rules are all there, but how they're organized makes it difficult to learn. Um, I had the advantage of I was I did play this game at Gen Con, so I, I was a I was taught the game at, in that scenario, so it was easy for me to, to grok it. But um, I, yeah, it could, can be a little bit difficult. And the other thing that's kind of weird is if you read the rule book, it doesn't really tell you how to play the. It tells you like how the games play, but not how to get started in the game. You have to go to one of the jobs uh, insert. So each. Each of, there's a bunch of these pamphlets in there that tells you exactly how to set up and what you do to win the game. It's very, very small, just a few pages. But without that, you, you need both to be able to figure out how the game works. I think that was a, st a stickler for um, for learning the game. Um, the game doesn't scale super well for playing um, true... I'm playing as one character. It's really designed for really four characters or five characters in the game. Um, so we probably should have dual handed it, but as you can see here, it's still you're still able to win. It just means you have a lot. It gets harder that way too. Yeah. How many scenarios are there roughly? I believe there are four scenarios in the core box, and there's two expansions with I believe two each. I'm not positive on that. I'd have to look exactly. A couple. There's a couple. Um, and there's also some fan made ones out there too. I think they're they're replayable scenarios though. I mean, you can. 
Well, we've played this one before. Yeah, and you... like I said, the other times it's like I'm looking for buildings and like, gosh darn it, where is this guy? Right. As opposed to it's just... Like, oh, look at this. <laughs> Sorry, I just tripped over you. <laughs> that, was, that was super, super lucky. Um, but yeah. And then you can get some really cool loadouts. I actually really like the campaign. I really like how that works in this game where it's... Unless you get have a massive payout like we did here, you're kind of struggling through the campaign, honestly. Like you, it's, it's tough to have enough money and to keep intel um, between them. Because the cool thing about this is these intel tokens you can grab in the game, they persist. Hmm. So we could have came into this mission with a, if we played on the job before this and we had three intel. Guess what? At, we can start the game immediately, spend those three intel, and immediately eliminate three buildings as options. But now... You need intel at the end to find the next job or pay someone a lot of money to find the next job. So you kind of keep one around and then you might need intel for the next job. But like if you're in the last job of the campaign, yeah, sure enough, dump that. So I like that a lot. It's cool to manage that. Um, I think the characters do have abilities that align to the what they do in the, in the show. I think they did a good job there. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of stuff like you saw the plastic dinosaurs, of course. Like there's a lot of nods to that. There's a... Uh, a pretty has a oh yeah cunning hat like of course we've got the <laughs> old you've got a lot of the 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 uh if you've seen the show a lot of stuff going on that you recognize fluffy pink dress of course <laughs> so but yes but yeah that's uh that's firefly let's show you how that works firefly adventures this is i believe the only cooperative firefly game out there so i was really excited for it. oh no there is a legend legendary firefly that's the other one is that I don't know anything about that. It's a legendary, but Firefly thing, themed. Like legendary Marvel legendary? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Yep. How would that work? It's the same system. <laughs> He's like, what do you... You play Marvel you just Monday. I know, but... <laughs> like, I guess I don't see the... Wild West space cowboy. He, I don't know. Same thing. It's yeah, so this one is... It definitely lays into the cowboy theme, right? Because you got cowboy thugs running around. Um, it's, and you can act heroic and stuff like that. You, of course, you you lose a little bit of that in the card game, but that's the only other cooperative one I know of. Okay. So, anyway. Well, I had fun because that was just unlikely. That success. was crazy fast. Be an okay. hour stream for a game that should last a lot longer than that. And that's when we should And we take. talked for most of it. We did talk for most of it. Yeah, I don't know how long this would take normally, yeah. so... Cool. cool. I think it's going to end for the night. Um, the next stream is going to be Marvel Champions. So Friday. We'll do that. Yeah, that'll be Friday. And then Saturday, Barrett and I are talking about nego- um, not negotiations. I'm sorry. Uh, for the co-op chat, we're going to talk about um, narrative games. Okay. I know. Brain's not working tonight. That's a, well, hence my... 50%? 50% was it's a five. four. <laughs> what? I don't what know what's wrong with you. I don't know. So we're going to talk about... Uh, um, yeah. Narrative games in that sense, because he's playing, uh, well, the role player adventures right now, and he's also playing other games like uh, Assassin's Creed, which we'll be doing on the channel very soon. Oh yeah, that will be most likely next week. You guys can see that happening. Cool. But yeah, that's probably gonna end it. Um, thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you at the next stop. Bye. Bye bye.